Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to get back and just have a look at another Linux distribution that I've not seen before. So this is, I'm hoping the pronunciation is Xtix. It's either Xtix or, or Xtick. Thinking LaTeX, it almost looks like the same way they uh, write their names. So I don't know, it could be Xtick. Who knows? But anyway, this is a Ubuntu based on LXQT. Well, based on Ubuntu with the LXQT desktop. So how does this differ, though, from Lubuntu, which is, of course, the Ubuntu of official flavor, which has LXQT? Well, the biggest difference here is this guy here is designed to be able to create your own custom systems. Fairly lightweight on the download, 1.2 gig of the the download, but this has the ability to run completely from RAM as a live key. I'm not seeing a specific way right out of the box to run a persistent volume, but you absolutely could do that. And you can actually create a system image of your exact desktop. So if you boot up into, into the, uh, the build here and then just go ahead and create a version once you have it correct or the way that you want, which means that if you want to have a business deployment of this desktop, you can actually do that very easily. And so with this, we're going to have a, just a brief look at the about information. So he does have quite a bit of, of real detail, a little bit about what's in it, how it works. Of course, he took out the GNOME desktop, installed LXQT, he took out the Ubiquity installer and installed the Refracta installer. And he does have some information here. Now, if you are running this inside of a virtual machine like I am doing now, there is an extra step you need to do. And he has this listed somewhere down here. Uh, okay, this one right here. So if you're installing it in a virtual box or VMware, what you need to do is you need to replace grub EFI AMD64 with grub PC. He gives you the two commands. Um, I was not confident that just running these was enough, so I also did the auto remove just to make sure that everything was working. And then when I went ahead and did the install, then it worked. So, of course, Refract is going to allow you to create a snapshot of your entire system or to just create a uh, create either on a hard drive or install onto a drive from whatever that you currently have running. So this is actually a, a very nice way to, um, to run a system. So overall, it's actually pretty good. Now, it's not as user-friendly as the documentation would, would indicate. Um, it's not super complicated. But you do have to understand a little bit more about how a Linux distribution is installed as far as where do bootloaders go, what is a bootloader, how a disk should be configured. So that's kind of what we, what we have. So what I did here is I went ahead and just installed this. One of the things I am finding here is it does seem to indicate the network is not connected, but if I actually boot up Firefox, we'll see it actually is indeed connected. So... I'm not sure why it is I'm getting a no network connection there. I mean, obviously we're going there. Let's just go ahead and run to startpage.com. So if I wanted startpage to be the default system, I just come over here, configure Firefox to set up with startpage instead of Google, and then creating the new system image, I could just go ahead and flash this right back onto the disk again uh, and flash it onto the disk for other things. I could add and remove any other software packages I want. So we'll go ahead and have a look at how all this works. Of course, as far as the, the basic desktop is concerned, um, it's just uh, LXQT um, on Ubuntu. So it does have all of the package base of Ubuntu. It is more of a minimal install, except we do have a few other things. So all of your basic, um, uh, just your basic tools. Uh, we have some terminal applications, uh, basic text messaging, obviously even file managers, archive managers. We do have GIMP, um, which is probably the only large scale application that I actually saw. So it makes me wonder why GIMP is actually there. It's like there's nothing else here except basic system tools. So you get a very true minimal system with this. Um, also, if you are running NVIDIA, it will automatically detect that on install and set up the, uh, set that up for you. Let's go ahead and have a quick look here at our memory. Ooh, I've not used this one before. So let's see what we got. 
total memory. So we're using 300 megabytes. So this thing is super lightweight. Uh, overall, it looks actually pretty cool. Now, again, the thing that makes this one stand out, and I'm not seeing any software installers except for Synaptic. So, uh, of course, if you're wanting to install software, you're either going to be doing it through Synaptic or through the terminal, which is another reason why this is not necessarily for the brand new user. But is that a bad thing? No, not at all. Not at all. So let's go ahead and have a quick look at the installers here. And uh, hopefully we won't mess up any disks or anything. So if you go into the system tools, you'll see a Refracta snapshot and the Refracta installer. When you're running the installer, um, let's see if we can actually... Um see what this does here okay so here it's giving us warnings that we're not running from a USB so any warnings here so when I install that it warns me that I'm running on a virtual machine but PC uh, uh, PC grub is not installed and so it actually gives us all of that information which is very cool so it is anything that seems out of the ordinary for the installer it's going to warn you about and then allow you to continue or to exit we do have this terminal window that shows up behind it he does tell you do not close the terminal until the installation is finished um, so just be aware of that. We're of course not going to go through with this because I don't want to wreck this uh, system right here. So we're just going to go ahead and exit out of there and just exit out of our terminal. The other one that we have here is our Refracta snapshot. What we're going to do here is we can either choose a uh, create a snapshot. We can resquash to make the ISO no copy, um, remake EFI files and ISO. So a variety of different things that we can actually run. So if you want to go ahead and do this to create a snapshot of your system, you can do that. Um, I am not going to, so close. Just go ahead and exit. We'll do that. And that's pretty much all we have. So what is the purpose and the use of this? Well, number one, I can see this as being a very good way if you are a business wanting to use an Ubuntu-based system across a variety of, uh, of different um, workstations for employees and you want them all to pretty much be the same, you can go ahead, install this, deck it out exactly the way that you want, including usernames, passwords, all that kind of stuff. And, and I'll say, by the way, you can change... I did not see the way to change the username. I might have missed it. There's definitely a way to change the password. But of course, you could get in there as a as a very quick thing once the thing is done and change the, the usernames if you want to. But it will allow you to start with a very minimal, very lightweight Ubuntu system, build out exactly what you want, and then create a snapshot ISO installation of this system, and then move that around to wherever you want that to go. So you can basically, it's a way that you can do a... Um, uh, do a uh, deployment of a variety of things. Again, I'm not sure why GIMP is on there. It's like the only application that's on here that's, uh, that, is, that is large. That's good. I mean, I'm not bashing GIMP. I love GIMP. Uh, it's just baffling to me why that's the only thing there. Uh, there are, it does appear as though there's probably some of the other Ubuntu tools do appear to be missing. My meta key does not seem to be working, but... Like, I'm not seeing the driver utility, which is an Ubuntu utility. So definitely there are some uh, there are some, some things that have been taken out uh, from Ubuntu. But at the same time, uh, this isn't giving me any, any real issues, any real problems. So with all that being said, uh, this is definitely a neat little distribution. Um, I think that this will give you, if you're, if you're somewhat familiar with Linux and you want to dive a little bit deeper getting some into installation. This actually might be a good thing in that you can select the partitions. You have the option as to uh, what partition tools to use. Just a variety of different things. So overall, I think that this is, this is actually, I would qualify as a distro. It takes Ubuntu and then it actually does do some transformative thing to it, uh, changing the installers around and giving you something that's uh, that's a very nice system. Just being able to get in here, make modifications, and then very easily from the uh, the system here, 
redeploy that system into uh, into your environment. So uh, that is it, uh, and that's uh, that's kind of what we're looking at here. So that is uh, XTIX, or XTIC. If you know the correct pronunciation of that, <laughs> let me know. This is one of the few times I'm not going to delete your comment, because I don't know, and I could not find any information about it. So uh, what do you think about this distribution? Have you tried it out? Uh, have you used it? Have you deployed workstations with this across the company? Let me know all those things in the comments down below.